earth would you need to look at individual names and highlight them within a document? Well, there's a couple reasons. First and foremost, we sometimes skip over names for reasons that are not exactly good practice. One reason we might skip over a name is we know it really well. Oh, it's George Washington. It's Winston Churchill. It's Joan of Arc. These are people that we know, and we probably think we know them a lot better than we do. So if we see their name, we'll just pass right over it, assuming we understand why they're being mentioned in this particular document, or that they are mentioning that famous person with that name, and not just someone with a similar sounding name that we're getting confused about. The other reason we might skip over a name is because we are very unfamiliar with it. If you don't recognize it immediately, you will either think it's not important, otherwise I would know who they are, or you might think, oh, that's interesting, I'll come back to that later, and then you never do. So it's important that when you read a document, you try to be objective, sort of ignore the document for a moment as a text that's trying to tell you an argument or a piece of testimony, and just find the names figure out who those people are, and then read the document for what it actually has to say. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring up this document, which I obtained from the National Library of New Zealand. And in this document, we have a letter that has been transcribed. Now, it's been transcribed by me into this Word document, but it was actually transcribed previously by the person who owned the handwritten letter. So the reason that's important to understand is that if they've made any typos when they changed it from a handwritten letter to a typewritten letter, that is an error that's been introduced and maybe wasn't what was in the original. It's the only copy we have, we have to do the best we can, but it does make sure we understand that if there's a mistake, not to believe that is the absolute spelling of that word or that name. We have to be slightly flexible. So what I'll do is I'll go up to my highlighter and I'll choose yellow for people and I'm going to go through everything in this document and I'm going to highlight all the names, all the pet names or nicknames, and all the pronouns that refer to people in that yellow. Now that I've completed this document, you can see that by far and away, the most common person that's mentioned is I. And that's not to say that Samuel Revens is particularly egotistical, but when you're sending a letter to a friend, as is the case here, you tend to use I a lot. But if we look at some of the other words, things like we come up quite frequently, maybe referring to him and Chapman, maybe referring to their community or their families. But you also get things like Sir George Grey, Featherston, Fitzherbert, Roebuck. There are lots of surnames here that I'm going to have to look up, as well as things like another man, who I may or may not be able to figure out who that is, but it's important that I tag it or code it. After having highlighted all of our different names, places, and items, I'm going to go through a couple of different websites and reference books to show you how I would go about tagging or highlighting or providing extra information throughout this document. Now how you do this next step is really up to you. You might want to open a spreadsheet or Excel document and put all the information in there. You might want to do it in a Word document or in a notebook that you're writing by hand. For me, I like to use footnotes because if I put a footnote into the document, I'm able just to simply hover over it and see the information the next time I open it up and begin to analyze the document. So that's what I'm going to do in this video, but again, do what works best for you. There's no single way of doing it. So the first thing we want to look at are the names and the individual people. Now we don't want to do full biographies of all these people. We might do some of them in more detail later, but that's really once we have our research questions established, we know what part of the documents are going to be most useful for us. At this stage, we're just looking for a couple of specific pieces of information. The first is the official or canonical name of the individuals. What does that mean? Well, the canonical name is the name that would exist in an encyclopedia or a library catalog or a dictionary. 
these are the specific ways the names are styled. So if a person usually goes by their initials or their middle name is, is or isn't included, or if somebody goes by a pen name more often than their actual birth name. So somebody like Mark Twain or Samuel Clemens, it depends on what source you look at, but one of these is a canonical name and it gives the specific way they're going to be referred to in reference books. And that's important. We want the canonical name so that you can look up more information about the person later. We also want to get their birth and death date so that we have a sense of when they lived and died and where they are in their life when the document is written. And we want to get a little bit of context about them. So are they a lawyer? Are they the son or the daughter of the person who's writing the document? Not a bi biography, but just a little bit of extra detail. So where do we get this information? Well, this document in particular is written in New Zealand, and it refers to people that have been in Great Britain as well as in Australia. So I'm going to start with something called the Dictionary of National Biography, which is the Oxford Dictionary of National Biography for Great Britain, the Australian Dictionary of Biography for Australia, and the Dictionary of New Zealand Biography. And these are all essentially encyclopedias that only refer to individuals, and they give lots of good information. Now, the Oxford Dictionary of National Biography is a subscription service, so if your university or library doesn't have a subscription, you might need to get the actual physical copy from the library, or you might have to deal with just getting the first line or two, which they do offer for free but that's often enough to get at least the name and the dates and a bit of a description. If you really need more information, I would use one of the other free dictionaries that's available online. You can also use Wikipedia, but always do that as a last resort. Now, you're not going to cite this information in any essay. This is not research. This is just a little bit of background context before you start doing your research. So Wikipedia is okay to start but try to use it as a last resort. So the first person we're going to do is Samuel Revens himself. So if I take his name, stick it into the Oxford Dictionary of National Biography, and I look to see how many different entries come up, and fortunately for me, there's only one. 1807 or 1808 to 1888, a journalist and newspaper man in New Zealand, and I know, based on the fact that this is a person I was particularly looking for letters from, that's who this is referring to. So if I take just this first part, I can see that he was a journalist and newspaper man in New Zealand, probably born in London, and that's a good place to start. So I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to put it here in my document. Control-Alt-F provides me with a footnote and I'm going to stick it in there. So now when I hover over this footnote, you can see it gives his full name as well as his dates and a little bit of information. I probably also want to notice that here, he, with Henry Samuel Chapman, established the newspaper Daily Advertiser in Montreal. Well, that looks suspiciously like H.S. Chapman here, who he's writing a letter to, so I'm going to include that as well just so I have that extra bit of information about him. And that's all I'm going to put for Samuel Revens. That is going to be just enough information to get me started. There's a lot of eyes in this document, so I didn't actually leave those highlighted. It was sort of obscuring what I was trying to see, and it wouldn't really help me to have that many footnotes to Samuel Revens. I'm just going to remember that to look at the top every time I comes up. But I will move on now to H.S. Chapman, who in this case I know is actually called Henry Samuel Chapman. And I'll put that in here as well. And again, a journalist and colonial judge. It does say letter, it does say in the letter down below that he's going to be Chief Justice, so that's probably him. Click on that, and let's have a quick look. Ah yes, Samuel Revens is mentioned again. So, Henry Samuel Chapman, born 1803 to 1881, so he is a little bit older than Samuel and he dies a little bit sooner. 
and it gives a little bit of information about where he's born, which is in Kennington, Surrey. So I'm going to take this, put a footnote here, and now I have that little bit about Henry Samuel Chapman. Now, these are pretty famous individuals. It's pretty easy to find them in the Oxford Dictionary of National Biography, as well as these two other sources. But what about some of the other people we know? What, for example, can we find out about Charlie? Well, it's going to take a little bit of detective work. You cannot let Charlie come too soon. Well, obviously that's meant to be please send Charlie as soon as possible because he is very busy. So who is Charlie? Well, let's have a quick look at who Charlie might be. If he's referring to him as someone who Henry is going to have to send to him, then maybe it's a family member or someone staying with Henry Chapman. And Charlie sounds like a diminutive, maybe something you would refer to a child as, or at least a son. So does Henry Chapman have a son named Charlie? And if we look down his national biography, it doesn't provide any information of that whatsoever. But this is the Oxford Dictionary of National Biography. Maybe his biography will be a bit more complete if we look in Australia or New Zealand. So if we type that in, we find his entry here. And again, we find quite a lot of information about him. And as we go down here, ah, he has six sons and his only daughter. Of his surviving sons, Frederick Revens, which is kind of cute, he named him after his friend, um, Ernest Arthur and Charles William. Charles William, that sounds like it might be Charlie. So I don't know this for sure, but it's a good guess and it's a place to start. So if I type that in here, And now when we hover over it, it will remind us that this might possibly refer to Charles William Chapman. And in fact, I've made that sound quite definite and I should not do that. So I'm going to change it. So now it clearly says this is a guess at who this person is. And what you would do is you would go through all of the different names that you've highlighted in this document and list who they are. Again, just their dates, their main characteristics, maybe where they live to give a sense of who they are and how they're related to this document. Once you choose your research question or what you want to get out of this document, you can do further research because you know who these people are.